four, two, three volts. R7 is going to be 841.8 millivolts. And R3 and 4 is going to be what for voltage for R3 and 4? 19.34 volts. Right, 19.34 volts for both of those. All right, then uh, uh, the voltage for R5 and 6? 17.77 volts. Okay, and put in all our test points. So A is still going to be a positive 24 volts. Um, B is going to be my 20.19 volts. B is still going to be a positive 20.19 volts. Um, D is still my positive 17.77 volts. D e is still going to be my positive 841.8. And then F is still going to be my plus or minus 0 volts. Okay, so there you go. We can figure out everything that we need to know with just using that voltage divider formula. We don't need to know all the current. If we ever did want to know what the current of any one given component, we know the two things so we can find out the, the third and the fourth. So we can go ahead and calculate out our power, we can calculate out our current and all that. All right. So now once we got all our test points and all our uh, voltages, Now we're going to do the troubleshooting. Now what we want to do is use on the troubleshooting. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to put the chart out. And yeah, so I'll have to wipe out the board here. All right, anyone have any questions on this stuff before we wipe it out? All right, let's wipe it out here. You have to look on your own paper there. I'm doing the troubleshooting. Is everything that was written on the board going to be similar to what we did in the test? Yeah. Almost, except for the circuit will change up, but it'll be very similar. We're going to do the, do the same procedure and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll straight line it. We won't need to know currents and stuff like that, but you won't need to know how, you know, make sure you know all your voltages and stuff like that. Test point E. 841.8 millivolts. 
And then at that point, E is just our ground, so it's going to be our plus minus zero moles. All right, so now this time we're going to just use the arrow method. Instead of recalculating everything out, we're just going to analyze it without recalculating everything out. So if my short switch, my switch shorts out, I've just got a line going across here. What's going to happen to my test point A? Is that going to increase, decrease, or stay the same for voltage? Stay the same. That one's going to stay the same. So all I'm looking for when it's on the final, all I'm looking for is just an arrow. Okay? How about test point B? What's going to happen to test point B? Is that going to increase, decrease, or stay the same? Stay the same. How about test point C? Same. 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 The only difference is I just can't turn it on, turn it on or off, right. Okay, now, now I'm going to open up my switch. So now my switch is open. What's my voltage going to be across my switch? Source voltage. Source voltage. So that's going to be my 24 volts. Okay. So I'm going to... So what does that mean for all these other voltages? Zero. They're going to drop down to zero. Okay, so now let's take a look. So what's going to happen to test point A then? It's going to stay the same. Still going to be my source voltage, because I'm measuring across the open or I'm measuring across the source. Okay, then how about uh, test point B, what's going to happen? It's going to stay the same. Yeah, I'm still going to be, if I bring my red lead down to my black lead, I still have a positive 24 volts plus positive zeros. So I'm going to get a positive 24 volts going across. Wouldn't that mean test point B went up? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, so test B went, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Good catch. Yeah, so test, B, test point B went up from a positive 20.19 volts up to a positive 24 volts. So test point B went up. Okay, so then what happened to uh, test point C then? That one went down, because what's my voltage at test point C now? Zero. Zero, so that one went down. How about test point D? Went down. Went down. Because that went down to zero. Then test point E? Went down. Went down. Test point e, F? Stays the same. Stays the same. It's still my reference point. Okay? All right, then we got... So we're going to close my switch back up. And now we're going to short out R2. So I'm just going to physically draw a short in there. Put a short in there. All right, so now R2 shorted out. So what am I going to measure for a voltage across R2? Zero volts. Zero volts. So what's going to happen to the rest of these components then? What are they going to, what are they, what's going to happen to these voltages. They're increase. Yeah, these are all going to increase. This one's going to increase. Um, is R1 going to increase? Yes. Yep, that one's going to increase. Um, are these ones going to increase? Yes. Yep, these ones are going to increase. They all have to make up the difference for, uh, let's see, did that one, uh, hold on, I'm going to double check before I say that. What, that side decrease? Yeah. This side's going to, uh, this side's going to, because this one here, it's well, all increased. Yeah, because of our. It's a parallel. That's why they, yep, it's our parallel circuit. So that's why they want to wipe out all our um, schematics, but that's all right. So we have, uh, we're just going to draw a similar situation here. So if I have a parallel circuit, and if I look at this as being, you know, if I combine all these down, that resistance across this one, across these three resistors, all that total resistance on this branch here decreased. So this resistance on this branch, the combination of all those, this resistance went down. So if my resistance went down, my total voltage across that one is going to go down. And since it's a parallel circuit, that means that this one here, the resistance stayed the same, but the voltage had to go down because of it being a parallel circuit, 
and then we remain constant across those two parallel series. But R1 here, this one, this voltage here, did increase. As this resistance went down, and then the rest of that voltage had to go up. So, so all these ones are gonna, these ones are all gonna decrease. Um, so this one's gonna decrease, this one's gonna decrease, and that one's gonna decrease. Because my new source voltage across it is going to, the source voltage across these two branches all decrease. All right. So then with that shorted R2 then, what happens to test point A? That one stays the same. Okay. So now at test point B, so my, from, from test point B to ground, we know that we shorted out R2, so that decreased that resistance, right? So if this overall circuit here decreased in resistance, what happened to my voltage across test point B then? It did what? So it's, what do you to expect for test point B? If the resistance across from test point B to ground, if this whole, circuit here, if this decreased in resistance, what happens to the voltage across it? It decreased. So test point B is going to decrease. Then how about test point C? What's happening? What's going to happen there? Decreased. What's that? Decreased. That one decreased. So that one's going to go down. Um, Let's see, now I gotta make, I gotta think about this one here. Um, let's see, that one took more, so that one. I don't like not having my other circuit. So we know that this one decreased. So.